Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy here, and I'm uh, I'm I'm here today to give y'all a little theory about something called conformal cyclic cosmology. So uh, it's it's a theory proposed by this dude Roger Penrose. You might have heard of him. He he wrote a book called Cycles of Time. It's a really great book. You might want to read it. Oh, by the way, I'm gonna be drawing like really bad uh, MS Paint art throughout this entire thing. So bear with me. Um, you know what? Cause that that's just the style of my videos, I guess. Um, so it's it's gonna be. I'll try not to draw too much, but the thing is, like, it, it's it's the only way I'm gonna have enough material to fill up ten minutes, okay? And I don't even get my videos monetized. I'm just preparing for that for that uh, eventuality. But the thing is, this dude Roger Penrose wrote a book called Cycles of Time. And it's it's a really good read. You should read it sometime. And uh, so basically, it, it its first two chapters deal with you know sort of normal stuff, right? Like entropy and uh, and heat death and uh, cyclic cosmologies, the normal kind. But that, but then in the third chapter, he proposes something that I mentioned before. Uh, conformal. I'm I'm not gonna write that out. He mentioned something called conformal cyclic cosmology, or CCC for short. So then, th what what it predicts is that um, every time the universe like expands, then at at the point where it reaches something called a time like infinity, um, when time essentially stops for it, then it then what it'll do is this will mimic the conditions of a new big bang. So I mean. This might be kind of weird because uh, you know because you know you uh, the it'd be at like almost zero density at this point so it'd be weird to think of it being funneled into like a new big bang but the thing is what this theory predicts is that that could be like somewhat of a new inflation if any of you have ever heard of Alan Guth Guth I don't know how to pronounce his name, but if any of you have ever heard of his theory on inflation, uh, the the increasing expansion of dark energy at this point sort of mirrors inflation at the beginning of the universe. So it's natural that those two could come to a parallel. So then the way he envisions it is that instead of a series of funnels leading into each other, it could just be a long tube. Oh, that's a really bad tube I just drew there. It, it could just be a long tube. And then they're sort of like, uh, they're sort of each each universe is a section of the tube. And of course, the size of the universe isn't scaled like this. But the thing is, uh, it's he scales it like this for the purpose of because each end is the same shape as the other. Or you could envision it as a cone that grows really large. And I suppose you could you could say that. But you know, uh, I I think his his uh. His method of, en of envisioning it is a bit more, it's a bit better. So then each of these little sections is called an aeon or an eon, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce it either. I didn't, I didn't pass my good old ninth grade English. So, uh, you know, the thing about this is um, each of them passes over to a new eon, creating an indistinguishable or at least a universe with laws that are randomized so that if either one were to start again, not that's not like physically sensible, but just imagine if that were to happen, they would come out like you wouldn't know which one was the first. So then the, the real point of this is in order to achieve a time like infinity, you either need to have a, a, a big rip, which is, you know, it's, it's actually quite accepted these days, the big rip. It's that the universe just tears itself apart, and uh, I suppose that'll form a sort of time-like infinity. But for one, we don't know if the big rip's gonna happen, and for two, that's not the thing that he said in his book. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm not gonna pay attention to the big rip possibility much now. So then, the other possibility is that the is that the rest mass of particles in the universe decays to zero. So then, the thing is. Rest mass should generally be conserved, and uh, the the way to get around this is um, rest mass can be converted into photons. Uh, I think that's a symbol for a photon. 
so then rest mass can be can be converted into photons which can which have a rel which have not a relativistic mass um which have a mass that's derived from their energy but uh jesus that looks like an electron symbol okay they they have they have a mass that's derived from their energy but not a, a rest mass of their own so then effectively they experience no time this is the same for any other uh, massless particle, such as a graviton or a gluon, or a, I don't know the symbol for graviton. All right, you, you don't need the symbol to understand this, but basically any particle with the rest mass of zero travels at the speed of light, and so they experience no time. And that's the way that a time-like infinity can be formed in a universe that doesn't have a big rip. So then, uh, so, so then the thing is, there's no way for a particle with charge, like say an electron, uh, can can do that because there are, there are no massless particles with charge. And the, the and the thing is, even even like a proton, it's it's composed of quarks, so it can decay into its constituent quarks and stuff. But the thing is, uh, it'll also emit in the case of a proton probably an anti-electron because uh because it's got a positive charge it needs to emit something with a positive charge or else charge isn't conserved so then uh oh, also a little little side rant uh stop calling anti-electrons positrons it's just inconsistent with the rest of uh with the rest of the particle names you know everything else anti-neutron is anti-neutron anti-quark is anti-quark anti-electron positron okay but I, I don't i just don't like that you know but if you disagree um you know whatever you can still call them positrons it's just i think it's a bit it's it's a bit uh inconsistent is all but then so, so then the way uh the way mr mr penrose uh suggests that these su suggests that this is reconciled is that at all of the electrons or anti-electrons uh their their rest mass Wow. Okay, that works. Their rest mass slowly decays to zero. So then, um, it will it'll tend to zero anyway, and eventually it'll equal zero. And that in at that time, a time like infinity can be achieved. But the thing is that that's violating charge symmetry, and and uh, well, I mean that's removing charge symmetry from the problem and replacing it with something more. A, a mass symmetry and the thing is if you changed all of the masses of of everything in the universe i'm i'm not sure if that would work um i i suppose if everything scaled evenly that would work but the thing is that's i, I think it's a bit of an inelegant solution to have to resort to removing rest mass from the equation so uh now let's get to the real the, the real meat of this theory so uh i i think i have i have a good old good old method for getting rid of this problem without having to resort to removing rest mass i don't know if this has been proposed before uh it's it's a pretty intuitive it's like a pretty intuitive theory people have already proposed protons decaying because of collapsing into tiny black holes so uh it's it's not a stretch to believe that people could think electrons would do this too so what i originally thought is that you'd have like a bunch of electrons scattered around right and then each one's within its own private universe because at this time the universe is expanded to that point so then the electron will eventually collapse into a black hole and radiate itself away as as a photon but but the problem i realized with this is an electron's one particle it can't collapse into a black hole and also electrons are less than the Planck mass which is around the mass of a flea's egg so then it, it and the Planck mass is the least massive a black hole can be according to you know modern understandings of physics so, so then the thing is uh, I thought of a different theory and it has to do with a uh, quantum fluctuations are, are you happy guys are you happy charles the only thing you talk about is quantum fluctuation yeah i know i know i just every every scientific thing i say is based off quantum fluctuations all right um i'll try to come up with more original ideas later but so then eventually far in the future 
a group of electrons could quantum fluctuate, you know, like if there's a verb for quantum fluctuate, whatever, they could fluctuate together and then gather into a large enough mass in order to form a, a black hole. Now, there, there'd definitely be more than three electrons, but uh, let's not pay attention to that now. Then they'd radiate themselves away, um, producing mostly massive particles like a uh, like protons, or like actually just use the nucleon symbol. So they'd, they'd produce mostly massive particles like nucleons and electrons because it's a small black hole, um, and those tend to radiate away massive particles. But every so often, or I guess actually more likely than the massive particles anyway, you'd get a photon. And the photons, they're massless, right? I mean, also you, you'd, get a, you'd get gluons probably and gravitons and all those, all that other good stuff, all those massive particles. So the thing is, eventually after a long enough period of time with the massive, uh, with the massive products merging with more, uh, more massive products to form more black holes, these would, uh, do, well, what, what did I just do? Oh, um, they, they'd form more massive black holes well, you know, they'd form more black holes, which would then radiate away more of their stuff. And eventually, what you'd be left with is a universe that's full of only massless particles, like a photon or... I don't know if this is a graviton or a gluon. I'm, I'm going to call gluon this and graviton this. I, I don't care anymore. So then, the thing is, uh, you'd be left with only massive particles. Now... One thing I could see against this is if the universe had, uh, if if the universe had a good old, uh, if the universe had mass had a mass that was uh, and like uh, not a factor of the Planck mass, so then the thing is, so then some some like uh, some particles might be left over. But the thing, I, I think this can happen, I don't know if this can happen, because I don't actually know enough of quantum theory to actually tell you all about this. But I think after that, photons could gather together, and uh, just the energy they contain could, um, could you know, just merge with them and form, uh, form another black hole. So I, I think that could happen, and then that would, that would just radiate away more photons and eventually you'd be left with a completely massless universe. So then the thing is, uh, oh, look, look at that. It's like a little leg. Okay, but then, so then that's basically my theory, okay? All, all you'd be left with is a massless universe. Everything is cool. Uh, universe mass equals zero. Time-like infinity achieved. So then, um, you know, after that, you could you could go on to your next eon no hassle you know so like uh after that all of the photons i don't know what happened to them i don't know enough of ccc to actually know what that is but uh you know it it probably happened so uh anyway that's that's all that's all that's all i have for my video so uh you know Smash that like button, guys, um, uh, and uh, please, 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 please subscribe. I, I, I hope, I hope to monetize videos someday. You'll notice I didn't swear in this video. It's because I've, I've become a good boy. You know, like, don't, don't watch my other channel. It's, it's not, it's not family friendly. All right, uh. Th thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hit that hit that notification button. Join the notification gang. Uh, uh, don't don't check out my Snapchat if if this is the only channel you have. Actually, my Snapchat's not family friendly. But uh, whatever. Okay. Uh, see you in the next video.